Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Charmed Season 5 Thoughts Well, a lot happens this season, so let's start with our starting off point. Cole has yet another interesting development to his character. He is now that ex-boyfriend who really wants to get back with, you know, his former partner, and she kind of doesn't really want him back at all, and he has to deal with that. And he also has to deal with this mass, this wealth of demonic powers, you know, and those powers are evil in nature. So it's going to influence him regardless of his own intentions. Now, and this is of course also the season where Cole dies and doesn't really come back. The, the slow descent into madness of his character in this season is quite well done. You know, at, near the end he's trying to commit suicide. You know, because he can't have what he wants in life, and the witches aren't going to kill him, so he's just trying to kill himself, you know, and he even, he mummifies Phoebe, you know, hoping to find some way to make her love him again, and, you know, we even have a invincible match-off between him and Piper as she's protected by her baby. And finally, he does die in the one form where they could defeat him, Balthasar, in the past, or rather in the alternate reality that Paige accidentally sneeze orbs into, fortunately. And the hint is that it just wasn't meant to be between Cole and Phoebe, because no matter what, it goes wrong. You know, even without Paige there, even without the power of three. My girlfriend suggested that maybe he could have just gone back to, you know, when Prue was alive, you know, not lose the power of three. But, um, you know, not sure what the in-show explanation is, but obviously, in real life, <laughs> Shannon Doherty did not want to come back. That also leads to some amusing very pick-and-choosing editing in the episode Cat House, where a slightly younger Silar portrays a warlock out for the witch's familiar, where Prue isn't in the shots. I guess she's arguably in that one shot. I don't know if that's actually Shannon Doherty, though. It might just be like a body double. Maybe it was always a body double, in fact. So every other time they show Prue, it has to be, you know, if she's an animal or something, you know. And, you know, for basically just being green screening, you know, actors into old footage, it's not a bad episode. So anyway, Cole dies and we, not long after we meet the Avatars, who you may run into later on as well, because they didn't actually accomplish what they really wanted. They described somewhat what they want, but they didn't get it from Cole's help. So we have the magical baby. At first, he's protecting Piper from the womb and, you know, messing with her powers and such, and then he's born, and then we have this whole but it's a boy, you know, it, was it supposed to be a girl? You know, in the second to last episode, or the third to last episode of the season, depending on how you count the two-parter season finale more on that, we have Grams outright saying, we don't have boys in this family, you know. This was not the child you were meant to have, you know. Not the only bad omen in this season. We also have, you know younger Siler breaking the figure from the top of the wedding cake. So anyway, once he is born, 
you know, he starts to become the focus of episodes and demons alike because he's very powerful. It leads to, for example, the crone going after. And I just gotta say, I love the character of the crone because she's just, her snarky, sarcastic comments and her delivery, she's like a female version of David Spade, you know, if, you know, slightly more ancient looking also. And, you know, the whole thing with the three sisters losing their abil their senses is just spot on. You know, it's just, it was done about as funny and interesting as it could. You know, all three lose something. You, know, you could argue that Piper's really isn't that big of a deal because she doesn't even really seem hurt by the car crash. But anyway... You know, and them dealing with losing the senses, and then the crone hijacking the senses, you know, to hear, you know, using the little monkey statue as a bit of a one-way walkie-talkie, being able to sing to the child to, you know, make it, you know, make Wyatt trust her, and, you know, the whole thing. And just, and you gotta love the naming of the child also, paying homage to... You know, both Leo and Paige, you know, excellent. The, that episode is, however, followed by the, I suppose, overall, it's a fine enough episode. But having the truth spell utterly botched. You know, it was hilarious when Prue did it. It was just priceless. That was, that's one of my all-time favorite episodes of the entire show. And this, the magic really doesn't work at all like it did, you know, the spell's effect seems completely different. You know, suddenly Nate is just saying things that he wouldn't normally say. Like, it's not like he's asked a question and his answer is brutally honest. Which is hilarious, which was how it was originally. No, now he just says things that he normally wouldn't say. It's just really horrible. But I guess if you look away from that one aspect, that episode isn't actually too bad, you know. The necromancer is cool, and you, know, you can't... Yeah. It's kind of difficult to go wrong with Chris Randon. And his minion is quite funny as well. Not to mention Grams is always just awesome when she appears on the show. So we have some time traveling also. For example, I believe Bakara is his name. The warlock from the future from when Cole is ruling the underworld again. And where he starts out just, you know, going they're on a mission, you know, it's very Terminator-like, that episode. He decides, maybe I could change something, and he finds his younger self, and the two of them nearly destroy the Charmed Ones. And, you know, we have Phoebe having to deal with losing not only an innocent, but one that she was, you know, really starting to love. You know, and Cole having to deal with that, that his ex, who he still loves, is now dating. And then we have, I have to mention the dream come true for any comic book fan, Witches and Tights. It's so obvious that episode was made for and by comic book fans. And we have a quite dramatic season finale, a two-parter, with a lot of elders dying, you know, the magical community seriously threatened by the Titans. Brian Thompson appears on the show again, always awesome guest star. And Leo, you know, becomes an elder. The Charmed Ones become goddesses, if only temporarily, thankfully. 
and Piper has to try to deal with losing Leo and the initial, you know, method is Leo using some magic to help her and we'll see how that pans out in the next season. And then we have Chris Perry, if that is his real name, and we have to kind of wonder what what's his agenda? You know, what is he really doing? Because he seems to know a lot about the future that he isn't telling them. And he has that one ominous moment with Wyatt where he says, you'll trust me, they will all trust me. And finally, the smoking gun. What is it? What exactly is it that he does to Leo, you know, as he's flying away? Again, only the next season will tell us. And I suppose that's essentially everything there is to say about this season, so hope you'll join me next time. A few more things about this season. We have fairy tales coming to life and being used against the Charmed Ones very well written episode with, you know, complete with Piper's The Red Riding Hood, Graham's and the Wolf and the whole thing. You know, Paige becomes Snow White and Phoebe as Cinderella with, you know, the pumpkin wagon and nobody harms my pumpkin, the, the, that whole thing. And we have Sean Patrick Flannery guest starring in that episode. Thus, we have in one season of Charmed, which, you know, casts both Boondock Saints, so that's kind of cool. And then we have Sympathy for the Demon, where Barbus, the Demon of Fear, makes a great return. You know, the whole... One thing is that he gets all of Cole's powers. He becomes just so powerful. And then he really makes their fears come to life, like, or it seems a lot like it, you know. And this is one of the one episodes with him where his power is most terrifying. You know, the page, claustrophobic, the orangophobia of Piper is decent, you know, you can kind of tell it's CGI. And Phoebe being tricked into killing Paige is just spot on, you know, the only someone truly evil, you know, because that's what she really fears, that she deep down is evil, that that's why she keeps attracting evil. And on that note, of course, San Francisco Dreamin' with the Sandman played by Henry Gibson and dreams come to life, you know. The Piper's, basically, she morphs Leo into another person. And this happens in dreams all the time, that a person appears as someone other than they are, or we know that that person is actually someone very specific to our lives or something, when we really think about it, or even in the dream itself. So, you know, the fact that Austin from, you know, Days of Our Lives... That's another thing. Austin, and then we have Bakara from the other episode, also, you know, from Days of Our Lives. That's... anyway. Maybe it's just coincidence. You know, Austin is actually supposed to be Leo. It's just that she misses them being that way together. You know, and Paige's worry that this child will not be celebrated like her own birth was not celebrated and she's then added to, you know, the family tree and, you know, part of the name goes to, is, is part of why it's name is her name, you know, and Phoebe with the slasher killer, you know, it's just perfect that that would be it, Phoebe, you know, with how much she loves horror movies and her love for, you know, kill it before it dies and everything. And not only is it, you know, first she just tries to kill him and then, you know, winds up 
just as dead or just as hurt. And God, I love the line. Would Freud have a field day with this or what? Exactly, spot on. And then, you know, she fights off the one in the dream. You know, two more appear, each with their own weapon, and the other two appear in, you know, real life as well, and free the third one. And, you know, we have them fighting to get towards the real Phoebe, and the revelation is, of course, that she's to, you know, she sabotages herself sabotages her own life, really, and, you know, you can kind of tell exactly the moment that they switch actors, because it's really clearly no longer a big, bulky man, but, you know, Alyssa Milano, but whatever. It's a good twist, you know, you would think that it, it's like Cole, or it's something, but it's herself. She has to face the fact that she has been self-destructive, and, you know, try to, you know, deal with that. And I suppose that's... Well, then there's also the deal with Piper's baby. The day it's born, you know, leading up to that, leading up to the baby's birth, all magic disappears. And, you know, we have the demon with a cell phone and a cab. And, you know, they have to fight off demons with not very much magic at all, and basically mostly using guerrilla tactics, you know, a homemade bomb, and, yeah, that's a pretty cool scene. And, of course, you know, Dad's new wife is actually a demon. It's also very nice that when they vanquish the one demon, the other two disappear. But I guess the spell just took the whole this evil thing, you know, literally. It, you know, took it to mean all three, I guess. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.